Hey, on this episode, we are going to finally finish that pool table. And in upcoming episodes, we are going to tackle a project that is a classic example of why you should do work yourself. I got an outboard motor from a pontoon boat that's been giving me fits for years, and I'm finally going to take care of it after I have been sick and tired of taking it to the dealer, who clearly have no idea what they're doing. And then we're also going to build an electric guitar. Stick around, it should be fun. Okay, the rails are all ready for fabric. I got my pocket facings all trimmed down to size. I got my feather strips all trimmed down so they fit nicely in here. And I actually didn't cut these uh, thin enough, so I actually had to trim off another 64th of an inch to get a good fit. And now it is time to actually start assembling. And this fabric actually has a top and a bottom. I think most do, but anyway, it's labeled to make it easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my feather strip in the slot and then mark it so I know where the center is. Lay my fabric in place. Line up my marks. tap down the center. Now before I tap anymore, I want to stretch this. And I made myself just a little hammer block. It's just a piece of maple with some fabric wrapped around it. And we'll tap it down. Before I go any further, I'll just go ahead and trim this excess off. Leaving that feather strip stand proud gives me something to cut against. Makes it real easy. Now I'll hammer it down. check to make sure I can't feel any high spots where that feather strip goes. And right at the end there I got a high one so I'm not going to go much better. Just going to trim off from the back corner of the feather strip so that I can fold this over and have a nice neat thing. Now, there are ways to do this to have no folds in the, in the corners. I'm not going to mess with that. I don't mind a fold in the corner as long as it doesn't affect the playability. I'm okay with it. And last time I recovered a table, I ended up with a bunch of, I ended up with a wavy, and I don't want that. So I'm just going to have the folds. That way I make sure I get a nice, uh, nice tight and nice smooth appearance. I don't do this for a living. There's people out there that know how to do this properly. I don't. A fold in the corner isn't going to bother me in the least. I'm 
I'll pull this taut. Tack a staple. And I can see right now that that's too tight, so I'm gonna have to pull this staple out. So I pulled that staple and I'm just just putting gentle pressure to pull gently because I don't want to disform the rail. Now, the last time I did this I used a hand stapler and I swore that I would never ever do that again. It took forever and my hands were sore for four days after the fact. So I went up and, up and picked up a cheap wide crown stapler and so far it is working much better. And I'm already out of staples. My rail edge is still perfectly straight and I got a nice tight fabric looking good. Yeah, that fold in that corner is not going to bother me in the least. All right, five more just like that, and this table will be ready for assembly. Well, I got the table all assembled and set up in place, and I got it centered underneath my light. In fact, about the light, I, this is a four bulb T8. I got this on clearance a couple years ago, I think for 10 bucks, and I just had it over a counter across the street in the barn. It wasn't getting a lot of use. I needed a light for the pool table, and I didn't really like the price tag on any of the pool table lights I saw. So I decided to do something about that. I just took this fixture, I wrapped it in pine on the sides and the top, hung it from the ceiling, and it lights up the pool table wonderfully. It looks great in this space. I really like it. I think I got less than 20 bucks into this light, and I couldn't be happier. It's just another example of the results you can get relatively inexpensively. I'm happy with it, it looks great. But anyway, back to the table. So what I did is I got the frame assembled and I got it leveled. And to level it, I just cut out some shims out of scrap plywood. I got some quarter inch, some eighth inch, and some sixteenth inch plywood. And I got it as close as I could with the framing level. Framing levels are not accurate enough for this type, this application. So the idea was just to get it close. And I got it pretty close. I'm pretty happy with it. The best way to do this is probably with a machinist level. They're much more accurate, but I don't have one. So what to do, I'm going to use the next best thing, a ball. Put a ball on there and you can, it'll tell you immediately. And you can tell right now it's going that way, so it's got to be shimmed. Also, I can already tell that over here, the centerpiece of slate sets low, so I'm going to have to shim that up and it sets low here, so I have to shim that up as well. And for that, I'll use those hardwood shims that I used, that I made earlier. And it's probably tempting to use those shims you get at the hardware store for doing doors and windows. They're too soft, wouldn't recommend using them. Buy some hardwood ones or make your own like I did. So I'm just gonna go around this center piece of slate, 
And I'm going to start with the center section, and that will become apparent why I'm doing that in a minute. So I'm just taking the ball, rolling it, and seeing where I might have to do some fine tuning. Still drifting this way a little bit, so we'll go a little higher. And you'll be surprised how accurate you can get just rolling a ball. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to crawl underneath the table and put a few more shims all on the inside. That looks really good. Now this is why I did the center section first. So I can lay my straight edge on here and I can use this as a guide to get the outside pieces relatively close. That's pretty close. Those seams, I should be able to get that ball to roll over there real slow without bumping or stopping. And that is really good right there. That looks really good. Now I did the same thing on the other end piece and we got everything pretty good. but. We're going to have to do it all over again because now it's time to actually bolt or screw the slate to the bed. And once we're done doing that, then we'll have to go back and re-level everything, make sure everything's good to go. All right, I got the slate all screwed down into place, and now it's time to do some fine tuning. And how I'm going to do that is just like I did before with the ball. And I'm a little low here. So I've got this screw snug. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hammer the shim against the screw. That's perfect right there. It's looking great. Now I'm just going to go over it and go over each edge with the ball and just to make sure we're good to go. Beautiful. Level. Looks good. Now it's time to seam this bad boy. Well, I've used my uh, favorite utility saw, which is kind of ironic. It's a dovetailing saw, but I seem to use it for everything but dovetailing. But anyway, I went through and I trimmed off all my shims just to make things neat and tidy. And now 
I've already taken some mineral spirits and wiped the whole t surface down. And I'm just going to go over with my hands and just feel for any imperfections. And just taking a scraper and scraping off any areas that might be high. Because if there's an imperfection, the balls will find it. All right, looking good. One last check of my seams. Actually, that one's a little high right now. All right, looks good. Now it's time to do some seaming. And for that, I'm using beeswax. Now you can buy beeswax for eight bucks a box, or you can go to your hardware store and buy a toilet bowl ring for $2. It's the same stuff, 100% beeswax. All right, I'm gonna just take my torch and melt some beeswax. I'm just gonna drip it down the seam and try to get as little as, I don't want any more than I need because I have to scrape it off. Perfect. Let that cool for a few minutes and some people actually go and fill in these screw holes but the screw holes in this particular slate is not on my playing surface so I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to leave them I'm going to leave them without the wax and I'm not going to I'm not going to bother filling them. Now just using a wide putty knife I am just going to scrape off the excess. There's one. Oh, I see I got a bit of an imperfection there that I didn't catch, so I have to remelt and do that one over. No problem. Now for some fun with fabric.